Welcome back to Steel City Drones YouTube channel. I'm Dave King, and I'm very excited because I finally had enough time to set aside to do a deep dive on multispectral drone technology, and more specifically, a very comprehensive review on the Mavic 3 Enterprise Multispectral. So we have a lot of jammed Pat content in this video that we're going to be talking about the discussions of what this drone can do versus what other drones cannot do. We're also going to go ahead and explain everything about what the multispectral technology and spectrum overall does and how it helps with plant health and monitoring. We're going to compare the Mavic 3 multispectral to a Matrice 300 350 MicaSense Red Edge P camera combination. We're also going to go over the improvements that the Mavic 3 Multispectral has compared to the Phantom 4 Multispectral. Then we're going to go ahead and create a Multispectral mapping mission using the Mavic 3 through Pilot 2. We're then going to also create a traditional mapping mission and create 2D and 3D maps using this aircraft. And lastly, we're gonna bring all this data into DJI Terra, process that data, analyze the multispectral results, and also show you the features and functionality of what DJI Terra can do. So lots of good stuff that we're gonna cover. Let's get to it. So to start off with, let's talk about the specs on this aircraft. This aircraft is just about identical to the Mavic 3 Enterprise E version. All you're doing is swapping out a zoom camera for the multispectral cameras. They both have the ability to do survey grade mapping as well and have a mapping sensor. And that's where a lot of confusion comes into place that many people think when they see the multispectral aircraft that it can't do mapping or traditional survey grade mapping. It has the same resolution. It has the same mechanical shutter. So when you're considering a drone that you need to do survey grade mapping as well as multispectral type of work as well, then this is your aircraft. So what we have here is four different multi-spectral cameras. Now, these are each five megapixel cameras. Now, this is an upgrade over the older Phantom 4 multi-spectral camera, which was two megapixel cameras each. This aircraft also has a light meter that's on the back of the aircraft. Now that's measuring the light from above because it's always measuring the changing conditions of the light. We might be flying all day long and the sun angles are gonna be changing through the day. The amount of clouds and the cloud coverage is going to be constantly changing as well because weather conditions constantly change. So this light meter is going to help us maintain the highest level of accuracy and efficiency in the data that we're collecting. Now the light meter is right here and that is measuring light from above downward. And these cameras are all measuring light reflecting from the ground up. This light sensor here should be calibrated to get the most accurate results. There are two different types of reflective panels that you can go out and purchase. Now when we're using the reflective panels, we're taking a picture straight down on that reflective panel and it's measuring the light on that very specific time and the different lighting conditions there are at that specific time. For those of you who are new to this technology and not quite sure on how the multispectral technology on drones works, let me go ahead and do a quick run through with that. So light is measured in nanometers and what we have is visual light and then we have beyond what the naked eye can see. So the chart you're seeing right now shows you what the visual light spectrum goes to and then also what we cannot see with our eyes is also into the near infrared. 
So in terms of vegetation and plant health, we can see how healthy or unhealthy something is by seeing that in the spectrum that our eyes can't. And we can be able to see when plants and vegetation start getting stress before our eyes can. That way we can put a proactive plan in place before it's too late or it's gonna cost more money to be able to do it by the time our eyes see it. So when someone's evaluating what drone to buy, they're looking at the overall cost and the features, the functionality, and the benefits that they're getting out of that drone. Let's look at the Micasense Red Edge P camera specs. So the camera resolution for the Red Edge P is 1.6 megapixels per channel versus the Mavic 3 Enterprise Multispectral is five megapixels per channel. That is a huge bump in resolution and advantage to the Mavic 3 Multispectral over the Red Edge P. With the higher resolution of the Mavic 3 Multispectral cameras, we're gonna be able to get a sharper image and we're gonna be able to go ahead and find and detect smaller images faster. Higher resolution is also gonna give us more GSD, ground sample distance per flight height. With the Microsense Red Edge P camera, at 400 feet, we're looking about a GSD of 7.7 .7 centimeters per pixel versus the Mavic 3 multispectral having a GSD of 5.6 centimeters per pixel. So again, much better resolution and better GSD on the Mavic 3 Enterprise multispectral. Now, the one thing that the Red Edge P does have is a blue camera and the Mavic 3 does not. But the majority of analysis done in multispectral applications is going to have the cameras that this does have. And DJI thought it was a very good trade-off to lose the blue camera and have a larger resolution visual camera that's gonna also give you much better resolution for mapping applications. The other thing you wanna look at is cost analysis. So with a Matrice 300 and 350 using the Microsense Red Edge P camera, you're looking at approximately $25,000 to $27,000 for the aircraft and that camera sensor. With the Mavic 3 multispectral, we're looking at a price approximately 4610, 4630 and up from there. So, and on top of that, this drone has the RTK module. So if you're gonna add on the RTK module, comparing apples to apples with the Matrice 300 and 350 price lines, you're now gonna go up about 3850 from that price. So you're almost about $30,000. So it is a significant difference in price. Plus you get more camera resolution with the Mavic 3. So for our test that we're gonna do, we are at a golf course. It's a nine hole course right around an hour east of Pittsburgh. And what's nice about this course is right now it's closed. So there's nobody on it. I don't have to worry about flying over anybody. It's a totally controlled atmosphere. And the golf course has been closed for a little bit, but they maintain it right now. Also, a couple other backgrounds to this is that we are in the very beginning of October. It's beautiful weather right now. It's 70 degrees outside. It's not too cold. The leaves are just starting to turn. We'll map a small portion of the golf course, just two holes. Then we're going to go ahead and map the entire nine holes as well. We'll bring that into DJI Terra. We are using the RTK down right there in the middle so that we can try to maintain line of sight as best we can with the drone. So let's get to it. So what I did was I went into through Pilot 2, created a flight route, and I'm going to show you some of the parameters that I created with this flight. We decided to fly at 200 feet high to see how the imagery would look at a GSD of about 2.82. 
we set the side overlap to 70% as well as the front overlap to 70%. So that means we have a set of five taken 574 times. Again, we have the four multi-spectral cameras plus the RGB camera as well. So a total of five per set. We're mapping 45.8 acres and it's taking a flight time of 23 minutes and 25 seconds to complete. All right, so we collected all the data. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring everything into DJI Terra. This is all of my images brought in on a multi-spectral mission. I'm gonna switch over to satellite view. Each of these dots represents a picture taken and I can turn them off right there. And right there is my 2D map that it created. I flew at 200 feet high. So when I drill in and zoom in, there's still very good detail at 200 feet. Just to give you an example of what this sensor can do for regular mapping missions. So now I'm gonna go ahead and look at my 3D mission that I created. So right now that's our RGB. Now I'm gonna turn on the NDVI. Our NDVI map here is taking calculations of the individual bands in creating a plant health map and also giving us a scale from negative one to positive one, where zero represents no vegetation. So everything in the red or the darker colors of the red is going to indicate a fairly healthy plant. So as we go down the scale into the oranges, the yellows, and the greens, then that becomes more stressful. So we can go ahead and toggle this on and off. I can zoom in and out. And I can get a very good A to B comparison. The images are overlaying very well. You can see in the trees, they are getting some stress as well. Again, to remind you, this is a golf course that is not currently open and all they're doing is maintaining by cutting the grass on a regular basis. They're not adding any extra water. So you can see we do got some stresses specifically over here on this part of the golf course. So it really is a very good indication. And this really is a great application for golf course management. This will give you a really good snapshot of the entire golf course without manually having to have to go right around in a golf cart without inspecting every tiny little area of the golf course that it's gonna be able to save a lot of manpower. You'll also be able to see exactly where that stress areas are and how to be able to go ahead and correct and reduce that stress through fertilization and water and other means of maintenance. So again, a lot of data can be obtained from multispectral cameras. So it covers a lot of bases. So I hope this helps you determine if this is the right kind of application and or aircraft that you're looking to be able to get into and what it does. If you have any questions, reach out to us, put them in the comment section down below. We'll be glad to help you out. We have this on our website for sale. And like always, we offer very good technical support after the sale on anything that you may buy from us. So thanks again for watching. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get notified when new content drops very quickly. So thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you in the next video. Steel City Drone Flight Academy offers the most comprehensive on-site commercial remote pilot training program in the United States. Our team of professional drone instructors has more than 30 years of combined experience and have trained more than 1,000 students to fly drones commercially. We offer on-site training anywhere in the United States. 
Dave King from Steel City Drones is a pioneer in the drone industry and is one of the most experienced remote pilots with more than 18,000 logged flights and over 10 years of flying experience. After working with more than 800 clients, Dave has taken everything that he has learned and incorporated it into Steel City Drones training program to prepare you to be the best commercial pilot possible. Our most popular training package is a four-day commercial program. Day one, it's an introduction to drones day, an introduction to flying day, equipment familiarization. Day two is all day flying. It's our advanced flying. You learn up to 15 different practice exercises. You learn how to fly manually without any automation. And you're gonna be amazed by the things that you can do by the end of the day. The third day is what we call advanced ground school. We teach you everything that the part 107 test does not. And that's gonna be everything, nuts and bolts from a theory standpoint on how to be able to do flight missions. Everything from flight planning, risk assessments, to wireless communications, how to use visual observers, all the resource management from a theory standpoint. If you wanna really sharpen up how to fly drones commercially, and professionally, this is a day that you cannot miss. The fourth day is a commercial applications day where we're taking the first three days, putting it all together, and we're doing simulated training missions that you would normally do for commercial flying. Inspection work, mapping, or they could be search and rescue, monitoring, a lot of different ways that we can go with that tactical day. It depends on who is in the group and what they want to be able to do. They're, they are completely customizable. We also offer everything from one day introduction classes to seven day train the trainer programs tailor made to your specific needs. What sets us apart from other training schools is that we teach you how to fly manually without any automation so that you're prepared to respond to the worst type of situation a pilot can experience. Steel City Drones offers small groups of up to six participants per instructor so that each student gets sufficient one-on-one -on -one instruction. I'm Detective Brent Dukes with Jackson Police Department. Uh, the thing I like most about uh, Steel City Drones on-site training was that from all the way from the setup, the most basic parts of the setup of the drone and the equipment, having an, ex an expert right there with us to answer any questions we have was so helpful. They offered a comprehensive package including equipment recommendations, training, certification, study guides, everything that we needed to implement this drone and entire department they provided. Uh, some of the training that we got on site was flight planning, um, emergency drone recovery, should the worst case happen, dual flights uh, with two controllers, uh, one operator controlling the drone itself, the other controlling the camera. I would say that as sophisticated of a piece of equipment as this is, it's only as good as the operator who is running it, and the operator is only as good as the training they've received. Um, because there's no way that I would have figured out some of the capabilities of this equipment had I not had uh, David on site as an expert. I'm pretty capable with this type of equipment. I'm, I'm pretty savvy with technology, but there are things that I learned about this because David was there to answer questions in real time that I never would have learned on my own or even with the other uh, members of my department who were flying with me. If I didn't have his expertise in real time, I, there's just capabilities that I would be completely missing out on. My name is Robert Warrington. I'm the budget analyst at the State Training School in Eldora, Iowa. Uh, working with Dave was fantastic. He gave us great guidance on what to look for and you know, kind of his insights and what would really help for our kind of uh, mission that we have here. And by building this, I think it's gonna help the school accomplish what we're looking for. For more information about Steel City Drones training services, please visit our website at steelcityflightacademy.com.